uh, my brother has uh, introduced me. I'm Reverend Lamin Lan and I'm with my wife, Sipiwe. We are both pastors at Mbabani Church of the Nazarene. So to me, it is an honor uh, to be called to the ministry as well as having a, a partner who has been called by God to minister the gospel. So we work uh, alongside and we have seen God blessing us and blessing our ministry. Uh, though we had some challenges in the past, but uh, trusting in the Lord who always pave the way, hallelujah, uh, praise God. So our lesson for today, uh, as I don't know whether it appears on the screen, we'll be talking about uh, one of the things that has made or a number of families, uh, it is a problem in a number of families. If we think of uh, marriage, one of the ingredients for, for a happy marriage is a good communication, hallelujah. So if we want to be successful in this journey of marriage, uh, one of the key things that we, we need to, to, to try to cultivate uh, to nature is communication. That's communication in our marriage. We do believe that uh, for every marriage to be successful, communication plays an important role, an important role in the in the home or in the life of a, a married couple. So I'll, I'll be looking uh, much briefly on the topic of, uh, of marriage, or of communication. We have already prayed. Uh, I think we are all ready to, to proceed. So our theme verse or our key verse will be taken from the book of uh, Colossians. Chapter number four, we read only one verse, uh, that is verse number six. Colossians chapter number four, uh, verse number six. Uh, that's where we, we, we are going to be, to be reading for, for today. Uh, I'm still trying to work on my computer here. I don't know what, what has happened because seemingly, uh, Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I'll, I have a, a few versions on the screen. Yeah, the first one is the NIV translation, which says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. The everyone in this case, in our case, is my spouse or family members. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the New Living Translation says, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. I also want you to, to note the words that he uses there. The conversation should be gracious and attractive. The English Standard Version says, let your speech always, you have to underline that, Always be gracious, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to, how you ought to answer each person. And the CEV, I have just four translations. It says, be pleasant and hold their interest when you speak the message. 
choose your words carefully, carefully. So I want also you to, uh, to underline that and be ready to answer to everyone who asks questions. Maybe the bottom line when, when you read these verses, we know that they were spoken by the Apostle Paul, but uh, in our case, I want to direct this to, to us as married people, because the Bible says we have to choose our words. You have to choose how you speak to your partner. You don't speak anyhow. And let your words be gracious and attractive to your partner. And let whatever you say be always full of grace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. So I, I, I want us to, to note that we do not just speak anyhow. We should be mindful of the person or, or the feelings of the person next to you. Whenever, whatever you say, could it be in words or in action? Let it be attractive, mm. as, a, as what the New Living Translation says. And also choose your words. Whatever you say, you have to think before you, you say something. Because I, I do believe that if you will have uh, healthy marriages, we, we need to speak well. We need to know how to speak to the person next to you because he is a co-leader with you in the family. So we, we have to choose our words. Maybe going to, to, to the next slide. Uh, to, to the next slide. We have to try to, to define what communication is, what communication is. Well, when you speak of communication, it is nothing more than the imparting or interchange of thoughts, opinions or information by speech, writing or even signs. Mm -hmm. That's communication. It is not only in words, but it could be also in thoughts, what you think about your partner, or it could be even the opinions that you have, or the writings. So when you speak of communication, it is the imparting or interchange of thoughts, opinions, or speech. It could be in science or writing. And secondly, another way of defining communication would be that it is an act of transmitting a verbal or written message. Or I hope we are still together. Mm -hmm. It is an act of transmitting a verbal or a written message. Mm -hmm. And the, I like this one from the Webster International Dictionary. It says, it is a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, speech, signs, or, or, or behavior, or, 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 or behavior. But in case of the husband and wife, when we speak of communication, we're saying it is that free and threatening, loving exchange <laughs> and transmission of information to the other person through the use of tongue or otherwise. Mm -hmm. It is the, in the case of a husband and wife, I, I want us to note these three words. In the case of a husband and wife, communication must be free and communication must be unthreatening and communication must be full of love. Hallelujah. Amen. It must be full of love. That is in the case of a husband and wife. So what I, I want us to highlight 
the Basel one, is that if we want our marriage to work, in marriage, we are in Siswati or Zulu. But we have to be mindful of how we talk to one another, to one another. Because you know, whatever you say, more especially to your, to, to your partner, whether wife or husband, it, it will have a lasting impact. Whatever you say, it might have a lasting impact and it might also change the mood in the house. So when we speak of communication in the area of marriage, Number one, we say it must be free, the communication. When we speak of the freedom of communication, it is the right to speak or to share your ideas and opinions without facing any punishment or any form of aggressiveness from your partner. So if our marriage will work, there should be freedom in the way of expressing my, my opinion to my partner. So we are saying it is the right to speak and share ideas and share opinions without facing any form of, of punishment mm -hmm. from my partner. You know, there are some families whereby you might find that even the wife is, even if she might have something that she wants to say, he'll be very much scared to say it to, 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 to her partner. And there are some men out there who cannot express themselves freely to their spouses. Why? Because they know that maybe after saying one thing, they might face punishment in any form, of any form. Some they can just pass some words of looking down upon the other person. So there must be freedom in the way we express ourselves Amen. to your partner. There must be freedom. And the freedom does not mean that you can say anything really nearly. But the freedom, there should be that element of mutual respect in the freedom. Even though you might be free to say whatever you want to say to your partner, but you have to think before you say a thing. The freedom must carry the, 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 the element of, of respect in it. Know how to speak to your wife. Know how to speak to your partner. Know how to speak to, 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 to your husband. So we should know that the key verse, like I've written on the screen, is that uh, our speech, it has to be always be seasoned with salt. We have to speak the truth without hurting the other person. So I am saying, Bazalwanya, though we are married, though Spiwa is my friend, though he, she is my wife, but I have to know how to speak to her. We are, I have to be mindful of her feelings because whatever I can say to her, it can have lasting effects or implications. And it can have implications on the marriage. And number two, I'm saying, between the husband and wife, communication, it must be free, number one. You have to be free to talk to your, to, to, to your wife. Communication has to, be, has to be free. And number two, I say the communication has to be unthreatening. It has to be unthreatening. When I speak of communicating between the two people. It has to be unthreatening. 
The communication has to be unthreatening. It must not be hostile or frightening. Not having a hostile or frightening quality or a manner. Not causing someone to feel vulnerable or somebody to feel at risk. So the communication has to be unthreatening. If I communicate with my wife, I mustn't call her names. She mustn't feel like threatened or even at times feeling vulnerable because there are some people, there are many ways to make somebody, to make your partner vulnerable. Let's say when you know that you have got money or she's not employed or she's not educated as you are, Whenever you communicate with her, you try to bring her to understand that you are the man in the family or you are the breadwinner in the family. So we are saying that the communication must be unthreatening because language can be used in establishing a connectivity or it can be used in building good relations. And it also can be used to create some obstacles of effectiveness. I, I don't know how to, to explain this in a way that people will, will understand. If you believe your partner, you are in that way trying, you are creating some obstacles for her to be effective in the home. Mm -hmm. Take for instance, there are some people who like comparing other families with, with the ass, like, hey, so if we always communicate in a way that will cause or create some obstacles in the marriage, then you are decreasing the effectiveness of that marriage. So as spouses, we should learn how to communicate with one another learn how to communicate. At, at times as married people, we, we know much about our spouses and we know even their weak points. But whenever we communicate, we mustn't try to resurface some of the mistakes that happened in the past. Because by so doing, you create obstacles of effectiveness. I want to believe that each and every one of us, Bazalwan, we have that hidden potential, but we can fail to, to identify the potential that my, my partner has if the way I speak to her will always try to bring in that element, which are fine. So we are saying that language can be used in establishing e-connectivity, and it can be used also to build good relations between us as families. Even the way we speak to our kids, even the way we speak to each other, Bazalwan, it should have, it should be unthreatening. It should be in a way that shows that we are trying to build this marriage or we are trying to build e-connectivity or we are trying to, to build good relations. And in a way that we are trying to unleash the potential that is in, in my partner. And number three, you'll tell me if I'm very fast at job. And number three, when we speak of communication, our communication in relationship, like as I've, I've alluded in the past, that communication in relationships is a core thing or it is a foundation of a, health, of a healthy marriage. So the communication at its core, it should be able to connect us using verbal or written or physical messages to fulfill my partner's need. Or whenever I communicate, I have to be mindful of the needs of my partner. In short, whenever I communicate with her, 
I mustn't be self-centered. I have to come with the intention to listen to what she says and with the intention to understand even, even her feelings. So communication it is about understanding your partner's viewpoint or point of view and offering support and letting your partner know that you are his number one fan. I like that. Because she is my, my friend. Whenever I communicate with her, she must feel that I am or she is my number one fan. She is my number one fan. Whenever I speak to her, there should be that element of love. I should speak to her in a way that let her understand that when I, you are number one, mm -hmm. whatever I say, I don't mean to hurt you. Even though at times we can differ in our opinions, but at the end of it all, I should understand that she is my number one fan. So the communication has to be loving. You, you know, at times when, when you listen to couples speaking, even at church, you might think that, ah, so and so, Zongi is in Ozama, right? And some other men or even women out there in church, they envy us. Like, hey, husband was so and so, she's so nice, but yet the person at home, Siluan, I don't know how, what, how, how do you say Siluan in, in, in Sisoto? <laughs> she be, he behaves like an animal, but when he's in church, the women in church, they say, ah, oh, Mpundi, she's so and so. How good she is. Hey, Baba, Mage, so and so. She, she, she's so fortunate to have a husband in that man. So I am saying that whenever we communicate with our spouses, let them feel the love. Let them feel that they are number one. Let them feel that we are always there. Let them feel that I am her shoulder to lean on. Hallelujah. So on another note, whenever I communicate with my, my fiance or with my wife, I should understand the love language. I'm sure that maybe it's a topic for another day. The words of affirmation, affirm, even whenever she cooks food, at least say something, my unant, the words of affirmation, the acts of service be around, and the receiving of gifts, a quality time and physical gifts, uh, et cetera. But all in all, what, what, what I'm saying is that our communication, there should be that element of love in the communication. Right. And in the communication, it has to be free. And the communication, it has to be unthreatening. Because once you threaten a person, he normally, you know, do like, I don't know uh, uh, if you guys have ever seen a tortoise. Uh -oh. We are to, to be what she, she can be. So uh, communication, we say it, it has to be unthreatening and communication, it has to be free. Communication, it has to be, it has to have the element of love. And maybe on another note, we have to ask ourselves then, why is communication important? to us as a family? Why is it important to us as married people? Communication within the family is extremely important. Number one, because it enables us as members to, to try to express our needs, communication. It, it enables us to express our needs and wants and concerns to each other. If we open the door of communication as a family, I will know 
the needs of my wife. I will know how he feels. And I will know how he wants the family to be governed, even the kids. So what we need to do as families, we need to have time whereby we switch off the television, switch off the television and allow the members to speak to each other, whether it is during meal time, dinner or lunch or whatever, switching off the television or taking a walk together, talk about the issues that concerns us as a family. So if we do that, we will be trying to connect to each other. We will be building a connection or we will try to, to glue each other to ourselves. So if we connect, if we communicate, Basalot, communication is a key, is a glue that will stick families together. So if we spend time, you, you know, most people, they, they spend most of their time watching television, watching soapies, and they don't have that time, that family time, like where they communicate, switch off the television, switch off the lies that we see on television, but spend our time, discuss things as a family. How do we want our family to be like? If there's a project that we want to embark on, let, let everyone bring in his or her idea on whatever that we want to do. So I am saying that the communication, it enables us members to express our needs, to express our needs. You, you know, maybe if I might try to deviate a little bit and try to talk about our kids, they need our time. They need to talk to us as parents. We only have parents who are much concerned about paying school fees, much concerned about putting food on the table, but we do not talk to the needs or try to listen to our children express their concerns. So I am saying, Mazaloani, we, we need to cultivate this. Have time maybe in the week to sit down with your family. It could be in an, a, in an informal setup or go outside together, talk about the things that pertains to, to the family. So, and also communication, I said it is important in a way that it has to be open and honest. Because once the, the communication is honest, it creates an atmosphere that allows the family members to express even their differences, as well as love and admiration of each other. It has to be honest. Let them talk about their differences. Because at times we think that maybe even our kids, we, we normally think for themselves, but let them come up, talk about their differences, talk about what they would want or they would love uh, our families to, to be like. And communication, it also builds relationships. As I've said, if we want our relationships to be cemented or to be solid, communication is the recipe. And as I've said, it also connects us which, with each other. And again, when you speak of communication in the family, it is a means of excellence. It is a means of excellence. Because when, when we communicate as a family, or clear communication, it helps us to, 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 to propel ourselves to our goals. So if we want to excel in marriage, or if we want to excel in life, we need to communicate. Mm. Let them communicate, let the wife be free to say, I want my house to be like this, I want this to be happen here, yeah, I want. So communication, it is a means to excellence. So if we want to have families that will excel, we should open the lines of communication.
in that family. You, it must not be easier, you, you know, because there are some families whereby you find, you find that if he something now, he has to go via my friends. That is not supposed to be the case. So, and at times you find that the wife would always be complaining that you don't listen to me, but if the very same thing that I've been saying now and again, if it comes through somebody who is not even part of us, then Guru Laguk accept her law. So if we want to excel as families, we have to have clear lines of communication. We have to communicate with your husband, communicate with your children, communicate with your wife as well. What do you, how do, would you like the family to be like? So God has called us to communicate because I believe that uh, like the Bible, what the Bible says, Adam was lonely in the garden of Israel up until he got his wife, Eve, hallelujah. So when he had, he had Eve, that was something that was so different because he wanted us to be social beings. So we have to communicate with, with our spouses. And, number, and on another note, I don't know what number is this now. We say communication will help us also to avoid misunderstanding. A lot can go wrong when we do not communicate. Take for instance, I'm held up at work. At times you even fail to call your wife at home. Hey Margaret, I'll be late today. I'm doing one, two, three. And if you fail to do that, he might think otherwise. So we are saying, in order to avoid the misunderstandings, let us communicate, discuss things with your wife. I'll be away one, two, three. I'll be away. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll be on a course. Uh, maybe it will last for a number of days. And open the lines of communication, even when you will invite your, 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 your in-laws to your house. Talk to your wife. Tell your wife about that. There must be simply surprises in, 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 in our marriages. And number six, if I'm not mistaken. So the communication, it develops strong relationships. It cultivates growth. And also it, it, it builds, it builds trust. trust. Yeah. So I want us also, Bazalwani, to look at the kinds of communication. And I want you to, to note this. There are different kinds of communication, but I've chosen only two. There is this which we call the unifying type of, a, of communication. The communication that builds our marriages. It is a type of a communication that edifies, and it's a type of a communication that maintains the marriage, a type of a communication that consolidates the relationships. When you read Proverbs chapter 25, verse number 11, I have about four versions here. A type of a communication that consolidates or that edifies the marriage, that edifies the marriage. Because we can even destroy our marriage through the way we talk to each other. Uh, I'll look at the ESV. It says, a word that is fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of a silver. And the new literal translation says, a timely advice is lovely, like golden apples, etc. The message it says, the right word spoken at the right time, at the right time. And the CSB says, a word spoken at the right time is like golden apples on a silver, on a silver tray. Why have I quoted this verses, Basalwan? There is this kind of communication that unifies or edifies our relationships. 
Proverbs 25, 11 says, we should be mindful of how, what we say because a fitly spoken word is like apples of God or a word that is spoken at the right time, at the right time. No, we know Bazalone, our temperaments. You know your husband or you know even your wife. You know when to say something and when to, to keep quiet. So truth, even though some at times, whatever that I want to say it might be true, but I have to look for the right time as to when am I going to say whatever that I want to say. So the word says here, the right word spoken at the right time. In short, we have to choose words. We have to choose what I have to say to Ma. Even when we have quarreled, that's a one. I, I should think what I have to say because whatever that I might say, it might have edify. It, 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 it might have add some fuel in the fire. So a right word, it means about choosing the right word. And secondly, at the right time, you don't just speak anyhow. We are cared, what do I want to say? Choose the right word and speak it at the right time. Because even when something it is true, it depends on what time do you, we kuluma at what time. At times, truth can be, can hurt somebody, depending on what ukuluma nini and ukuluma ganja. So there is, there are two kinds of, of communication that uh, I've highlighted here. And I've said the communication that will edify your marriage. And whatever you say, think that, does it build my marriage? Does it add value to the person that I'm talking to? Does it consolidate my relationship? And choose the words that you have to speak. The right word spoken at the right time is like golden apples. You, you, you know, Hallelujah. So a right word spoken at the right time is like golden apples on a silver tray. You know how if you're thinking, or if you think of that, Bazalon, I, I, I wonder how uh, the writer of Proverbs say that because. It can match very well. If you touch on the apple gold, wabega esgen is silver. It complements each other. When the light is shining on it, you see the beauty there. So we are saying, as married people, know when to say things and know when to shut up. Hallelujah. At times, some people might even think that. Uh, why are you not answering me? But know when to talk and know when to keep quiet. And number two, there is this type of a communication that divides the family. This kind of a communication is a communication that destabilizes and it brings disharmony and destroys the relationships. You, you, you know, Bazalwan, People who love to use the tongue, they always reap the results of the tongue. And there are some people now, even today, who are reaping what they said maybe last month or last year or whatever. So we are saying we should be mindful of how I speak to my, to my, to my, to my partner. Because whatever that I say, it has the potential to build the marriage or it has the potential to destroy the marriage. It has the potential to build the person that I'm talking to or it can also destroy him. So there is a kind of communication that ruins and communication that destroys relationships. And like some others, at times, 
I once had that experience of uh, a certain couple. Akuma, like, you are useless. How can you say that to your, to your wife? You are useless. Ah, when I, you, no, it is a kind of a communication that will ruin the marriage. So that we are saying, Bazalwan, don't do that as married people. So number two, most marriages dies because of failure to use our tongue. Proverbs 12, verse number 18, it says, the words of a reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. There are people, Bazalwan, at times you, you, you cannot hit your wife physically, maybe using your physical hand or your hand, but the words you speak to her, they are like piercing swords to the spirit. But the words of a rest, reckless person, they pierce like a sword. So we should be mindful as a married people, Bazalon. Yeah, so how do you communicate with your wife? What we normally hear when people come to us for, for counsel, most of these things, it is the way we speak to our, it's out to our spouses. The words of a reckless person, others, they say, other versions, they say, the words of a fool, they pierce like so. So whenever you speak to your wife, you find that long do maga kuluma is like he's carrying a spear. We am the mad. Alinya to ne makama lenga kuluma. So we are saying, Bazalwa, you should be very mindful of how I talk to my fiance. And the New Living Translation, it says people when they speak they make cutting remarks. But the words of a wise person brings healing. Imishato ili men nendela les kuluma mayo bazalwa ngulungul aga chant lo as kulumis anega ashe let our speech be seasoned with salt. So those are the two types of uh, kinds of communication. And maybe before we conclude, I want us to look as to how can we improve our family communication. Number one, it will be just a reputation. Be available, to be available. Make time in your busy schedule to stop and talk about things. Talk about things at all. Talk about things that affect the family. Talk about things that affect your children. Be available to your wife or be available even to your children as well. Even in your busy schedule, stop and talk about things that will add value to your family. Talk about things that are danger signs to your family. Make time. And number two, you know, when people, they think in this communication, when you talk of communication, it doesn't mean like to wait, to listen and wait uh, for the other person to finish so you can try to respond. No, be a good listener. Be a good listener as we, 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 we these are communication guide, guidelines. Be a good listener. Do not answer until the other person has finished talking. Try to be a good listener. Do not speak up until the other person has finished what he had to say. You know, there are some people who have this tendency of like, hey, Baba, you know, there is something that is not okay here at home. You have to want to throw, and then he will cut him. Okay, Sanvid, Sanvid, I know what you want to say. No, 
Be a good listener. Listen or listen, try to not to interrupt or do not answer until the other person has finished. And be slow to speak. Be slow to speak. Think first. Don't be hasty in your words. Speak in such a way that the other person can understand or hear what you, 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 you have to, to say. Don't be like somebody who is bubbling as a lot. Be slow to speak. Think first. You, you know, even when you are angry, I normally say to people here, count at least 10 times. Count from one to 10. One, two, three. Before you, you give an answer, be slow to speak and speak the truth always. Speak the truth always. Whenever we speak as a family, make sure that you speak the truth always and do it in love. Do not exonerate. Don't try to pick at one, two, three things. No, just try to, 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 to speak the truth always. And thirdly, or number five, do not try to use silence to frustrate the other person and explain to him why you are hesitant to talk. Try, do not try to use what silence to frustrate the other person. There are some people, Bazalwan, who are like that. Like when he feels that he, he, he or she is not in the mood, he will just use silence to frustrate. And then you will ask yourself, Sammy Menden, what have I done to her? Or what have I done to him? He will just use the silence to frustrate him. I, I, I don't know why Bazalwan is in the at times. Some people, they use silence to frustrate the other person. But once you do that, you, have, you should know that you are inviting quarrels to, to your homestead. And when you are wrong, admit that I am wrong and ask for forgiveness. When you are wrong, admit that you are wrong. When somebody confesses to you, tell him or her, you forgive them. Be sure that it is forgotten and it will never be brought up maybe to the person again. Say that I am wrong, admit, more especially us as mates, we fail to admit that. Say that I am wrong wherever you are, ask for forgiveness. And loyal mundu lokte lagwe the forgiveness. He must verbalize it and say, I am, I forgive you. If you say, I, I, I am sorry, like Spira, I'm sorry. She must say, I forgive you. And do not bring that in the future again. And be a good listener, like I've said. Be a good listener. Show empathy. Hallelujah. Show empathy. This means turning into your child's or your wife's feelings and letting him or her know that you understand. So, Bazalwan, thank you so much. Maybe to add a little bit on that, I've missed something. Avoid nagging, avoid nagging, or try not to criticize or to blame the other person, but try to encourage and edify them. Hallelujah. Do not blame them. Try to understand the other person's opinion. Make allowance for the differences or be concerned about your, their interests. So, Bazalwan, maybe that is all that I, I can say for now in, in this topic of communication. I thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pundisi. Um, we, we, we appreciate it. Uh, yeah, we've learned a lot. Thank you for giving us timeless principles yeah. um, that are necessary for every person to understand when it comes to the issue of um, communication. 
So now we would want to, you know, take up any question that uh, anyone may have or any comment that you may have, that anyone may have. Uh, there's a hand there. Uh, ah, that's a, another wonderful friend of ours. Uh, please go ahead, ma'am, uh, ma'am Magbuso. Oh, so, 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 sorry about that. Um, uh, I think I locked, um, um, forgot to unlock. Y yes, uh, thank you so much. You, you were not allowing me to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Mfundis Zamini, for, for the presentation. Uh, actually, we were following with much uh, interest. Um, it was so interesting. I, I just want to, I just have uh, some few points. Maybe I will not exhaust them, but uh, I just want to, um, to come back to some of the uh, the, the issues in, in terms of um, the presentation. Mfundisi uh, um, um, made it uh, um, to, to our awareness that um, there should be freedom in communication. And uh, the issue of freedom, I just want us to maybe clarify it in terms of where we, you want to be free to express your anger in the way that your anger is normally expressed because we've got different uh, ways of um, expression. So if you, you are expressing it in the way that the other person is not comfortable with that way, I do not know how, how we can help the recipient to also understand that communication is not always how you want it to, to happen because even the other person has got a freedom of, of, of expression. Uh, I'm referring in case you are angry. The second one is the issue of not bringing it back in the future. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so amazed that uh, how can we put rules, such rules to say it shouldn't come back in the future? Because if, if the Bible is our guide, you know, God will sometimes remind Israel of how they disobeyed, you know, for the sake of making sure that they don't repeat what angered uh, him. So I, I think, um, yeah, bringing it in the future is to make sure that, you know what, we must live in love. Don't repeat what you also did that other time. You remember how angry I was when you, you did that. So I, I think um, we need to try and be practical and not inhibit the other person to, to speak about what he wants to speak about in the future. You know, sometimes you remember and you just want to be free to express, to say, this is how much I was hurt that other time. You are repeating the same thing. Sometimes you're helping the person not to keep doing it because he will not want or she will not want you to remind him in, in future. So I think the onus is on the recipient or the person who has the, the negative deeds to make sure that it doesn't repeat because you will be reminded how many times he has done it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mama uh, Buso. That, that that really was very much insightful. We appreciate that. Um, to things, feel free to type in any question in there, and also feel free to to raise your hand if if you want to uh, ask any question. Uh, Rev. Klamini, the question was asked, uh, so over to you. Yeah, thank thank you so much. Yeah. I understood the question from Reverend Mavoso. Yeah, with, with the issue of anger, uh, what I, she, she said, uh, I think she mentioned something like, uh, uh, you're not supposed to be angry or whatever if I'm, 
I'm trying to, yes. Okay, when, when, when this thing of freedom uh, in terms of uh, in the communication lines, you are allowed to be angry because we are human. We are all human. You can be angry. And uh, being angry, it is another way of expressing your feelings about whatever thing that it might have happened. So I, I'm saying we, we, you have to be angry because you have to, be, you are free to be angry, but your anger has to be, it has to be within the bounds of our marriage. I, I have to be angry. It is true as a human being, but I, I should control myself. You know, there are some people who, when they're angry, they'll even do things that they will regret in the future, in the future. So that when I, I, I have to be angry, but make sure that I keep my anger within the bounds, the marriage bounds. In that anger, I should show uh, some kind of uh, respect of the marriage and whatever. So, Bazalwan, I'm saying that you can be angry because you are free to be angry, Reverend Mabuso. If something has hurt you, you have to express it because I, I cannot pretend as if everything is normal. I have to be angry at times uh, because we are trying to build here. Uh, we are trying to be realistic. And secondly, Ibazalwan, the other question, it was in the interest of not bringing things, yeah, like uh, reminding me, let's say I've made this mistake. That's what I was saying. And I ask your forgiveness. And whenever you find that maybe in the future, if there is something that happened, I, I, I don't think it would be a good thing to say, you did this even the last time. You did this, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you have forgiven me, forgive me, Bella. let me move forward. Because at times, I, I, it, it doesn't mean that I will repeat the same thing. But let's say we then quarrel on another thing. And then you'll come and say, even last year in March, you remember that it was day number so and so. You did this and I forgave you. And now you are coming, we are doing these things again. No, Bazalwan, you mustn't try to resurface things that happened in the past because by so doing, you, you know, it, it will affect me in a very, very negative way at times. Uh, it will make me to shrink, <laughs> Bazalwan. So that's what I, I, I was trying to, to say. Uh, but thank you so much. But otherwise, thank you for the comment. Maybe others can, uh, they have something to say on that as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Indeed, we, we have good representation. Uh, I see many, many friends from Eswatini and also from South Africa. So, uh, Rev Mabuso is, is insisting, uh, Rev Lamini, so she sent me a message which says that uh, it's not seen to bring it back to the surface and let's not protect egos. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know, we, we can also weigh in there on, 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 on that question, but maybe Mr. Mamavolo wants to come in first uh, and then we'll weigh in. And Mr. Mamavolo. Uh, thanks, thanks very much. I I think I'm I'm aligned with what uh, uh, Reverend Lamine is saying because if you go in to repeat um, what has happened in the past, like the example is given to say you may well have been involved in an incident and then you have asked to be forgiven and you were forgiven because we are human beings i mean human beings by nature there there will always be an error but it's not necessarily that one must encourage uh, people to commit error with the view that they will be forgiven but if we are to live together as a people if we are live together as a couple we got to appreciate that there will always be those differences. And it is how do we how we manage them so that we are able to live together. But if we are going to be reminding each other on mistake in counting, 
that will mean that we have not really forgiven each other. And that is not necessarily to say you are encouraging uh, people to continue to do what they, they, they should do wrong with the hope that they will be forgiven. But you are rather saying that, uh, you see, each, each case on its own merit. Uh, each case, it looks at, uh, at, 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 at the point of, of its occurrence. But if you put a fire, uh, I doubt there will, be, there will be harmony because that means that if you've got a, a file, you, you have not necessarily forgiven, you have not closed on this matter. So you, you still have it in mind. I, I, I think the best way is to say uh, when, 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 when something has happened, uh, you try your best to make sure that you, you don't repeat it. And, 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 and that way, unless maybe you, 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 a person keep repeating the same thing over and over again, I think that's where then trust can be broken. But I, I, I think to the best of everyone's ability in a marriage, because marriage is a union, it means everyone must be committed to it. One must align himself with the, 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 the ensuring that you communicate better and you, 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 you ensure that you don't use words that can, can harm. Obviously, if you keep repeating the same harm, uh, that is the day to break the marriage. But where we believe that we have, we have found a way of moving forward and another incident different from the previous has happened, but the file is pulled out. I think I, I, it might create the problem of, of moving forward. Uh, thanks. That, that, that's my, my input there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katema Mawolo. We truly appreciate that. Um, so, Rev. Kamini, we, we would want you to also answer, um, you know, communication in difficult situations. For example, um, what is the role that the differences in our sexes play when it comes to communication? Because I can imagine that many men may be quick to say that forget about the past, don't tell me about the past. I'm not sure that many women would also be in favor of forgetting very quickly the past, you know. So um, would there be any role, would there be any differences or, or conflict that may emanate in communication because of the sexes? And also what about personalities? Because there, there might be people who um, don't like talking, you know, so they are naturally born quiet people, you know, they don't like to ruffle any feathers. Um, and those people, they tend to get married to those people who like talking, um, you know, so, so how, how do we then also manage that? How do we manage the differences in personalities or maybe even the differences in preferences or, 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 or background experiences when it comes to communication? There's also a question that has been sent to us here. It says that, um, I will read it for you. When there is silence in marriage, tension usually escalates. How do you break that silence as a couple? And who's supposed to do that? Or who's supposed to take the first step of breaking um, um, that silence in marriage? So perhaps maybe the, you know, there's, there are times that it's, there's just silence in marriage. For various reasons. So, so when we are in that situation as a family, who's supposed to be the one who breaks the silence to ensure that we go back to normalcy? Uh, we are happy to have you here in full DC. And any other person who may feel free to add to the communications, um, you know, you may also raise your hand and, and help full DC. We must not kill you with the, all these hard questions. Uh, over to you, Ramini. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Ja, I, I, I'll start maybe try to, I'll, it will be an attempt uh, to, to answer the questions. Uh, hello? Okay, we're still here. 
Yeah. Yes, we okay. really can see. Okay, can thank you. Yeah, it, it'll be just an attempt to try to, to, to answer the questions. Uh, I know that my, my colleagues uh, will, will help me, Lazara. Okay, we, 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 with, the, with the issue of tension, what we have to, to know, Bazalwan, it is not much about who is supposed to break the, uh, the, the ice. Because we are in this together. We are in this together. So it could be any of us. The only thing that we need, need to try to do is to, it is to, to, to swallow the pride, to, to swallow the pride uh, and face reality because we are together in this. We are a family. So one of us has to talk. So because, Bazalwan, you know, at times we mustn't allow the devil to, to, to use us in terms of trying to destabilize uh, our marriages. So uh, I can say that it's not about a maid or a husband or wife, it is the two of us. We should try to, to try by all possible means to, to prevent this. Uh, yes, at times, it can come with the, our temperaments, the way we have been wired. Some people are, are a little bit reserved, but whilst others are sanguines, the sanguines will always be the first to, to say whenever things are. Uh, uh, the, 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 the same is, is, the, is true with the, uh, the first question. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do believe that uh, even with the sexes, Vazalwan, there are some, it depends on how a person has been wired. Maybe at one point we have to talk about the different temperaments, understanding the, the, the temperaments uh, of, of, of the members of the family or, uh, or our temperaments, because that speaks very much about how we will behave and how we are going to relate to some of these things. So if I am somebody who is a little bit reserved, don't ever, don't think that I'll be easy, it will be easy for me to break the ice because I am reserved. I will say that, ah, let us just leave it like this and continue. But somebody with a different temperament can always try to, to be the first person to break whatever the eyes are. Uh, I, I, I hope I, I'm understood, Bazalwan. I, I wouldn't push it much on, on, on the sexes per se, uh, because some people might think that women, they can talk and, and they can talk. Like, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Joe, but maybe others can, uh, can try to add on that as well. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, thank you so much. I, I, I appreciate that. You know, I think the other issue, uh, I, I see Rev Mabuso, maybe let's give to her first. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you, Mfundisi. Uh, maybe my attempt to, will, will be to say, uh, most of the time, the person who will not want to initiate uh, breaking the ice will be the offender. Uh, so I think even if we are the one who, who's been offended, you, you can initiate because you, you want peace. And it, it, even if you, you, your temperament is, um, you are an extrovert, you are, a quiet, you are an introvert, you are a quiet person, there are principles, especially in marriage, there are principles that you cannot say uh, I'm quiet by nature, but you are married. You know, and the marriage is a place where you need to communicate to you are with, with someone here, you are not alone. So I think irrespective of your temperament, the principle is that just talk. I think the issue of pride here, one who will say, I just don't care if, if he, he or she doesn't uh, talk to me, I'll keep quiet, especially because I'm the one who is wrong. So if he keep quiet, I'll keep quiet and the wrong will then be forgotten and we will not be able to deal with it. So I think the issue of pride, it, it comes into play here. Temperament, I don't mind to blame it to temperaments. There are principles we must learn to, to talk. Most of the time you find that it's, it's, the, it's the offender who doesn't want uh, to talk. You will keep, 
initiating breaking the, the ice. And every day you are the only one who initiates breaking the ice. And the person will get used to say, let me keep quiet, he's going to initiate. Then I will see how I, I, I get away with it. You know, it, it's so unfair. I think marriage is here to, to, to test our sincerity in, in living a Christian life. Be sincere and you take a, a matter at hand. Thank you so much, Rev. Rev is saying that let's do what works. So forget about whether you're a man or a woman, about your temperament, personality. Uh, there are principles in marriage that we need to, to adhere to, uh, which can help make our marriage successful. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, just to add on that, I think it's very important, uh, as Rev Mabuso also already stated, that is, as, as, couples, we must understand that first we are children of God and um, uh, we need to extend grace. We need to extend love. Even when you see that the offender is not um, responding, just try to extend grace and love and see how they will respond. Normally, uh, you find that when, when there is tension at home, uh, instead of extending grace and love, we 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 use thorns and you know and and thistle and we that's that's the, the the trick that the enemy is using to push us apart from each other. Yes. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to add that you know, yes. um, let's just extend grace. Let's extend grace, 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 and love because we understand love and grace better um, as, as children of God. And I think on on our uh, Another question that has been asked um, that uh, always bringing back the past. Maybe it depends on the type of the offense that has happened in the family. So if, 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 if how deep the wound was. So for instance, if it's something like um, infidelity, uh, the, the offender must extend grace to the one who has been offended that at times there will be triggers. When those triggers come, you don't have to push your, your partner away by saying, you don't have to remind me. If, if it's a trigger, understand that something, something happened to, to trigger uh, your, your partner. So find ways to always come back and assure your partner and, and build trust again. And then sometimes it might take time depending on the level of um, spirituality of your partner. So uh, the, the issue of extending grace again and love and uh, always affirming your partner that, you know what, I'm here to build. I made a mistake and I, it will never happen again. And that can also, can also help. But when, 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 when something like that, when you have forgotten about it and two years down the line, it surfaces, um, uh, you, the offender, uh, extends grace. But also, <laughs> the one who has been offended also extends grace to the one who has done the, the wrong in the family because they also having pain of, of, of hating you as their partner. That every time when that is, 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 is brought into the surface, it brings the, the very same pain that you 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 also felt meaning that when when somebody commits um, uh, I'll just say adultery um, they also uh, experience some kind of pain uh, in the family so we need to extend grace from both parties both sides understanding each other and keep on affirming and 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 praying together until the problem is 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 um, is resolved. resolved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, thank you so much. I think this issue of infidelity is a very important one. So I think next year, sometime we probably have to deal with it thoroughly. How to deal with infidelity or how to prevent it from happening or even how to recover from it. So that is something that we'll have to deal with. Um, maybe another last round of, of questions, uh, Rev. Lamini, you, you, you come and comment on, on what has been com commented, on the comments that just 
were there. But also, I'd like you to add this thing, the issue of money in communication. So I don't know whether it's the issue of pride or not, um, but if you have to ask your partner, you know, for money, maybe like me, I have a sweet tooth or, you know, I like buying sweets. Maybe you want to ask for money from your partner so that you can maybe buy sweets or, or whatever it is that you may want to buy. Um, and, 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 and there is that little issue of pride there and there's the issue of communication. Um, I'm not sure how best do we handle such, you know, tough, tough, tough discussions like um, money management. Maybe it could even be issues of debt or, you know, because sometimes we, our risk tolerance when it comes to, 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 to debt may be very different from one to another and, and so forth. So I'm, I'm just curious to understand a little bit an overview of the role of communication uh, when it comes to, to money matters in, in, in marriage and, and how do we handle that? Uh, and I, and I, Uh, so, sorry, you're on mute, Rev. Uh, we want to hear you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, th thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you so much uh, uh, about that one. Okay, maybe before I get to that one, I wanted to also add on what Mark has said pertaining to the issue of silence. Because some people can use the silence to frustrate you, to frustrate you. It is a way of, use it as a way of fighting. He knows that maybe he cannot hit you, but he would rather opt for silence. You know, and even at times you might find that uh, there is not even, there, is, there are no quarrels even in the home. Some people have got moods. They would wake up in the morning, not willing to talk to anybody. Uh, so the, the such things, they, they do happen. And then the other one will be following around, what have I done? Is there anything that I've done? Whatever, whatever, whatever. But you will just use silence to frustrate the, part, the, uh, uh, the other part. I don't want to talk to him today. I don't want to do, you, you know, those are things that has a potential of destroying the marriage. Because if you fail to talk to me in the house, then the husband will go out and will find some other people who they will talk to him. So I, I'm saying, Bazaran, with this issue of silence, like what the others have said, it carries along with it pride. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we, we have to desist from that uh, as married people, because uh, like uh, Reverend Mavuz have said that in, there are principles in, in marriage. So if we want to, there will always be problems in marriage. So the only the best solution that God has given to each one is the tongue, how to, to talk, because we are in order for things to happen. Okay, coming to, to the question of, uh, of finances. <laughs> you, you know, it has been said that uh, some main causes of marital problems and conflicts, or even divorces at times, is poor financial management. The, the way we, we, we manage our, our, our finances. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how to, to, to tackle this, Vazalwan, but if couples do not sit down and plan their financial management cordially uh, and consistently, uh, they, they are bound to, to, to have problems indirectly or directly. So uh, it, it calls for sitting down, talking about this thing. How much are we willing to spend? Uh, because there are some who are shopaholics uh, who whenever they go to a shop, they will always find something to buy. Uh, and then there are some who ask, so very strict in the end, the way they handle it, if I mention it. Like this, uh, I would say it is e, e overindulgence that is 
spending a deal of great money on luxuries uh, and like sweets, like uh, whatever, whatever, like, <laughs> like, like, like you, you, you have said. And these people, they've got what we call at times this impulsive uh, uh, buying. This, have this impulse of buying. I want to spend, I want to buy this. And if I do not give my man, uh, my wife man, because at times I wouldn't give a, 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 a let me make an example, Basala. <laughs> I, I wouldn't give you because I know that what type of a person uh, my partner is, my partner is. Uh, I mean, uh, at times I will count every cent that goes out and I will need e accountability on how we have spent uh, that money. But if he has got this kind of uh, overindulgence or impulsive uh, spending, going to a shop whenever he, he will feel like I should always have uh, money in my pocket. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, I, 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 but in the, all in all, even though you might have a, a, a sweet tooth, but uh, try to be reasonable, try to be reasonable. Think about the family because whatever little thing that we have, it has to advance the family. It, it, it has tried to improve or whatever our family. So I would say that as married people, we, we need to sit down plan about this thing, put selfishness aside and be realistic when it comes to, to money because it is a scarce commodity. It is a scar. So th thank you, thank you, Bazala. I don't know whether I've answered that correctly, but uh, it is my take. Yeah, that's, that's perfect, Pundis. Thank you so much. You've answered it uh, correctly. I think we should be mindful that whatever we do financially, it should be for the success of the family and 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 plan together. Um, there, there, there has to be time where we can have a little money to, to, you know, to buy sweets and stuff and, and play just to thank ourselves, but it should not be uh, overly, you know, we shouldn't spend over our uh, income. Thanks. Yeah. I need this question. Yes, no, no, thank you so much. Um, I, I think we'll also need to hear a little bit from uh, Rev Clamini, Rev S. S. Pewitt Clamini. Um, uh, because he is a reverend after all, <laughs> uh, you know, before we, we, we yeah, uh, but before then I see there's a comment from Bongani Sigutla, he, 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 he has sent something on the chat, uh, he's saying perhaps this silence, um, it's, it's a positive thing at times because you want to prevent, um, you know, a harmful outcome. And then you, you, you think maybe if you are quiet, it's so that you don't say things like, uh, I think Rev, you were telling us that um, we must be careful about what we say because, you know, words can destroy marriages. So maybe it's better to be silent than to say certain things that you can't take back and, 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 and Etc. So I think that is the comment that he's making on that. Um, uh, but, but over to you, uh, Rev. Clamini. Yeah, I think I think you're still on mute. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you so much. I, I thought. Uh... Uh, there was a hand. Okay, there, there's no hand. I thought it, Mr. Scrooge there was a, he wanted to respond on something. Uh, yeah, yes, yes, but maybe if I can, if you can please come again and uh, so that I can try to, there's a little, there's something that I, I, I failed to capture uh, as what you were saying. Yeah, I mean, if Mr. Zikuda doesn't mind saying it, that, that would be fine. But essentially, he's saying that not all silence is negative. Sometimes okay. a person would be silent so that they, you know, they prevent a negative outcome. You know, yeah. in other words, they don't say things that they may re regret in the future. 
and, and so his question is, well, what do you think about that? Do you think that's a valid uh, response or, 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 or not? Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. I think I get you now. Okay, what, what we were saying, we, we were saying that you, you must, we must not use silence to frustrate a person. But if you de decide to be silent or you have to state or explain why you are hesitant to talk at that given time. You are hesitant to talk at that given time. Like, hey, please, uh, I, let us, I, I don't want to talk about this uh, reason one, two, three, but let us get an opportune time where we will be able to, to say whatever we wanted, or to say whatever I want to say. And one reason, it could be that I am angry for now. I don't want to speak in a way that you, is going to hurt you. So it, it is better to explain why you are hesitant to talk at, at this time and let the other person understand that because you are doing that for the sake of the relationship uh, between the two of you. So, uh, you, you know, it, it is like what we have said in Proverbs, like uh, speaking the right way at the right time is like apples of gold in a golden in a silver platter. So I, I think that is being wise and understanding. If you state the reason why I am hesitant to say something at that given time, because you you know with us, I don't know whether it's a culture or, or what. I, I always want, you, you always feel like when somebody is not responding to you, it is a way of in a way, but it is better for you to say that, oh, stand aside, I, I think, let us leave this for now. Let us leave this for now. I don't want to say something that I will end up regretting in the future. So I, I believe, in that Bazaran, we have to explain the reason why you are hesitant to, to talk, other than just being silent. Because <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we, we have probably come to the end. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not seeing any hand. Um, so in terms of the announcements, we would obviously we'll give uh, Rev Lameni and, and the Hope Kulu Mama just to, to wrap up um, before we close with prayer. But um, in terms of the announcements, this weekend we are going to Limpopo Game Reserve. Uh, we, it will be wonderful. And um, we hope that next year many more can be able to join us. So during some time in December, we'll start making the announcements and uh, we'll start receiving the payments towards that so that um, more people can join us for next year. But it's going to be awesome. We'll, we'll be having uh, um, people from Teach Every Nation of Bruce Wilkinson. They'll be teaching us about what the Bible says about marriage. So that will be, we all know the great Bruce Wilkinson, I mean, the books that he's written, The Prayer of Jabez and, and so forth. So it is just interesting to hear what he believes the Bible says about marriage from A to Z. So, you, so there'll be at least eight principles that they'll be teaching on that and it will be wonderful. Yeah, I'm not sure there's any other announcement that I'm, I'm missing. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much, Rev. Lamini. Uh, you can uh, just say your last words, your closing words, and we appreciate your time. Yes, and being with us. This was a very uh, great teaching, and uh, we will apply it in our marriages. And I believe that uh, because it's on YouTube, which will stay for generations, and other families will also uh, benefit from this recording. So Thank you so much for allowing God to use you today. We appreciate you. Yes, just to say we will upload it by, by around nine o'clock uh, on, on YouTube. So it was not live, but we'll upload it live from nine o'clock. 
of things around you. Thank you so thank you so much, uh, uh, Bazalwane. Thank you so much uh, for the for the time, and thank you so much for trusting that I might say something to to Abazalwane. And I strongly believe that uh, we cannot do this on our own. We, we need God to be the anchor of our our marriage. Uh, and uh, lastly, a person can say that uh, when you, 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 you read about uh, some of the marriage ability traits uh, as people who, who are supposed to, to get married uh, or some traits that will develop good relationships, Communication is part of those, is part of those. So I, I can challenge each and every one of us. Uh, let us try Bazalan by all possible means to decrease the numbers of people who, who separate in marriages. Because if there is something, or if there's an institution that the devil is attacking nowadays, it is marriage. So the devil doesn't want us to see us together. He doesn't want to see our families being happy, worshiping God together. So he will always try to put something, uh, uh, trying to taint the image of, of, of the marriage. So we, we need to ask God, uh, we have to try to develop the culture of communication. We know that at times with men, the culture that we live in is that men cannot talk to, 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 to a woman, the, uh, but we need to, to try to change that for the sake of our children and for the sake of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in the marriages that we are in, Bazalan, we should know that we are mentoring these youngsters who are our children. They, 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 when they look at us doing things they will say, they should say, one day I we I would love to get married. Uh, so Bazalwani Natsing Logo, we thank God about everything and we pray that the Holy Spirit will keep us together up until we see each other at uh, what's this place in Pundis? I want to attend. <laughs> yes. So Bazalwan, I, I, I don't know whether I, we can pray. Uh, Thank you. Can, can, can we pray, Bazalwan? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful time in your presence. Heavenly Father, you say it in your word, unless you build a house, those who labor, they labor, but in vain. Precious Holy Spirit, help us, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, to remain true and committed to our marriages. The Holy Spirit, we know that apart from you, Lord, there is nothing that we can do. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every homestead. Heavenly Father, we pray for your grace to be upon your children. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, Lord, that you outpour your love in every marriage. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray that, Lord, you rekindle the fire. In Jesus' mighty name, Heavenly Father, we just want to be sanctuaries to worship you. We want to be living sanctuaries in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Babe Lord, we give you praise and glory. Protect your people, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, my God, in the entire family, in the mighty name of Jesus. For, Lord, they are the bearer of the vision. Help them, Holy Spirit, to increase the vision. And take us where you want us to be. In Jesus' mighty name, 
We bless your name, my Father, now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.